This problem has a lot of words and a lot of parts, but fortunately, even though there is a lot going on here, none of the individual parts are that hard. So we'll just take it one piece at a time. We've got a car, it's moving, and we're gonna and we're braking it. So it's accelerating to the point where it comes to rest. So part A of the problem asks us to find the magnitude of the acceleration of the car as it brakes, assuming that that acceleration is constant. So as usual, when we have problems like this, we're going to pull out our kinematics equations, look at each of them, and then determine which one is going to work best for each part. And for part A, where we're looking for the acceleration, and we have the initial and final speeds, and we have the distance, then the best equation to use, in my opinion, is the v-squared equation, where the final speed squared is equal to the initial speed squared plus 2 times the acceleration times the, the distance traveled as the car brakes, which I'm going to call delta x sub b. Now, the final speed in this case is 0, so this term can be ignored because we're braking, so we're coming to a rest. And then solving this equation for uh, for um, for a, this just becomes negative v naught squared because I'm bringing this uh, to the other side of the equation so that we get the term containing the a on its own, and it'll look like this now. And then solving for a, we get negative v naught squared over two times the distance delta x sub b. And if we put this into our calculator, we find an acceleration of about negative 9.08 meters per second squared. However, since the problem is specifically asking only for the magnitude, we're going to ignore the minus sign when writing our answer to the problem. So the absolute value of the acceleration is just 9.08 meters per second squared. And that's our answer to part A. Part B asks for the exact same answer, except in terms of g. So what that means is it wants us to write the acceleration as some number times g, 9.8 meters per second squared, the acceleration due to gravity. So to do this, we simply just take the value we just found and then divide it by 9.8 meters per second squared, because that'll get us the ratio that we need to uh, um, of this of this acceleration to the one for g. So we would just write this. We, we, we would solve this by taking 9.08 meters per second squared, and then dividing it by 9.8 meters per second squared. Kind of a coincidence that the values look so similar. And then we find a ratio of about 0 0.926 times g. So that is our answer to part B. Now part C asks us to find how much time is required for the car to brake. So we're looking for T sub B here. Now once again, we would go for our kinematics equations here. We'd go through our kinematics equations and determine which one is going to work best. And I think the one, I think the equation we have that's probably going to be simplest for this part is to use one of the, the lesser known equations that states that a distance traveled is equal to one half times the sum of the two velocities, v naught plus v, times t, times the time, t sub b. So I'm going to now solve this. I'm going to rewrite this equation to solve for t sub b. And of course, the, the final speed is still zero, so this term can be ignored. And you find an equation saying that t sub b is equal to 2 times the distance, delta x sub b, and then we divide by the initial speed. And by the way, it's just dawning on me that I probably should have mentioned this earlier, but since the time or the initial speed is given to us in the problem in terms of kilometers per hour, it's going to be easiest for us if we convert this into SI units. I mean, the problem asks us to anyway. So if we do our conversion, if we do a unit conversion, 200 kilometers per hour shows to be equal to about uh, 55.6 meters per second. 
So that's the speed we should be using for the initial speed here. But either way, we put that into our calculator and we find a break time value of about 6.12 seconds. So that's the answer to part C. Now part D asks us to find the break time in terms of T sub R, the reaction time. Now kind of like part B, this problem is as, as, as simple as doing a simple division to get a ratio. So we'll take the time that we just got, 6.12 seconds, and then divide it by the reaction time given to us in the problem, 400, me, uh, 400 milliseconds. So that's 400 times 10 to the power of negative 3 seconds. And we find a ratio here of about 15.3 uh, times T sub R, the reaction time. So that is our answer to part D. Part E asks, is most of the full time spent reacting or breaking? So we can figure this out simply by looking at the times. This part's pretty simple. We can very easily see that the time spent breaking is greater, much greater, than the time spent reacting. So most of the time is spent breaking. And I think lastly we have part F which asks if T sub R, if the reaction time is increased by 100 milliseconds, how much farther does the car travel during that reaction time? So we're only looking for the increase in time. We're not asked to recalculate anything. We just have to find out how much more time is taken as we're reacting for these 100 extra milliseconds. So I'm just going to use the standard uh, velocity equation here, solving for distance. The additional distance that we travel during this time is equal to the initial speed we're going at, the speed before we start braking, multiplied by this change in the reaction time, which is given to us in the problem as 100 milliseconds. So we just put this into our calculator. The speed, the initial speed, is just the same speed we've been working with, 55.6 meters per second. And then we multiply it by the additional reaction time, 100 uh, milliseconds or 100 times 10 to the power of negative 3 seconds and we find that this change in distance is equal to 5.56 meters so that's an extra 5 meters we travel while we're trying to react here and so that's the answer to every part of this problem I hope this video helped you out if it did please consider subscribing as that'll help me make more videos like this and if you have any questions, please leave a comment down below, and I'll do my best to help you out as best as I can. But that's all for now, and I hope you have a lovely night. Bye-bye.